What is up, guys? My name is Lex, back at it here with another Florida video. I'm at Harris Pompano Beach, just about an hour north of Miami, Florida. I'm going to be playing a private 5, 10, 25 game today. It's a $3,000 max buy-in. Let's get started. First hand, there's a raise to 75, a couple calls, and I call on the button with ace-8 suited and flop pretty good. 10, 9, 8 with two spades. I flop a pair and the nut flush draw. There is two checks, a bet for 75, two calls for 75. Given the fact that this board is very connected, I don't want to raise and get re-raised off my equity, so I just make the call for 75, and the turn card four ways is the four of diamonds. Not the card we were looking to see. This does not improve us to any extra equity. Initial raiser now checks after betting the flop into multiple people. Now the hijack player bets 225 bucks with a very quick call by the cutoff player. Action over on me. I'm getting a great price here to draw towards my nut flush draw. Maybe my two pair is live with an ace. I don't see any point in raising again given the fact that it's a multi-way pot. I'm guessing my opponents have a single pair hand, straight draws, and flush draws themselves. So I'm just trying to see a cheap river card, which I somewhat do when the initial raiser folds. We're now three ways to the final card, which is a queen. Man, it is just so tilting when you flop big and you miss everything on the river. The hijack player now checks, cutoff player checks, and now the action's over on me. This pot is pretty big. I'm sitting here with fourth pair should I turn my hand into a bluff and bet big? I bet I could probably get them to fold out two pairs or one pair hands if I bet huge here representing a jack for a straight. But ultimately, I check behind. Hijack player shows 8-7. The other player shows 6-3 of spades. And I show ace-8 of spades, which is good to take down a pretty big pot. Wow, this was a crazy one. I did not think I was going to win this one on the river, but hey... I'll take it. This session is pretty wild, so make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of the video. I end up playing some huge pots. Next up, there's a limp. I raise A7 suited in the cutoff to $100. Button calls $100. Big blind calls $100. And the limper calls. We're going four ways to 3772 spades. Top pair, top kicker for me. The big blind now leads out into all these players for a smaller $200 bet. I think this could be a spot I could put in a small raise, trying to get value from worse 7x hands. Also, straight draws and flush draws as well. I don't think he would be leading out on this board multi-way for this sizing if he had something like 8s, 9s, and 10s. So I raise it up here to $500. Button gets out of the way, and the big blind who let out on the flop makes the call for $500. Turn card is a king, and once he checks over to me... I think this could be a spot I could bet small or check behind. And I like to check behind, and the river card is the deuce of diamonds. Now my opponent pretty quickly leads out for a $400 bet. This doesn't feel too great. Kind of feels like a milky sizing, but I think I'm going to have to call. Oh. Jack I do make the call and my opponent announces jack high later. He said he flopped the jack high flush draw. So we got lucky there. He didn't hit a pair bigger than our seven and he didn't hit a spade. And we end up winning another pot. Over the next hour though, I lose some bomb pots, raise and have to fold. Lose a couple more small to medium sized pots. And now I'm down around 500 or $700 on the session before a huge hand comes up. There's a call from early position, a raise from the hijack to 75, a cutoff call for 75, and I overcall on the button with queen jack offsuit before the big blind puts in a very small squeeze to 250 bucks. All the opponents call, so I make the call with queen jack offsuit, looking to hit the flop, and I do. Five ways to king, 10, 9, rainbow. We flop the absolute stone cold nuts in a $1,000 multi-way pot. As if it couldn't get any better than this, the big blind player who re-raised pre-flop bets out $250 before the early position player now raises to $800. Oh my god. There's a bet to $250, a raise to $800, the other players fold and the action's back over on me. We're sitting here with the nuts, the best hand possible. There is no flush draw on board. Now, of course, we could be up against a set or two pair. But if I re-raise again here after this $800 raise, it's going to look incredibly strong. I feel like if I call, maybe the big blind player will just jam all in 
for his last $2,000. I think that's the best option, so I just make the call for $800, slow playing my nut straight here on the flop, and after a little bit of thinking, the big blind makes the call as well. There is now over $3,500 in the middle. I've got the nuts and continue to have the nuts on the eight of spades turn. Okay, that is what I'm talking about. The board did not pair. I love this turn card. Big blind player checks. And now early position player who raised to $800 fires out a $3,000 bet. Oh my god, this is insane. He's betting $3,000. I've got the best hand possible. I've got around $4,500 left in my stack. The only thing I'm a little disappointed in is that I think this player probably also has Queen Jack as well because he's playing it so fast. But I only have one option, and that is all in. I put all of my $4,500 in the middle with the nuts. The big blind makes the call as well, and we are playing a massive pot. The big blind had less money, so the main pot's around $9,000. The outside pot's around $5,000, which equals a $14,000 pot. This is an insane sweat for us. Both of these players only run out the board one time. A massive 14 k in the middle. We've got the best hand possible. Let's see if we can hold. There's a big side. There's a big side though. Oh, oh, wow. oh look at this. That's a straight yes. side. No. Missed that. Oh, that my is God. So bad. The seven of spades hits the river, and the big blind player proudly shows ace ten of spades for the nut flush. He wins the main pot, but there still is $5,000 on the side pot, which I lose against queen jack suited of spades. So I end up getting scooped here. I was chopping this one up with the early position player who also had a free roll with a spade. They both hit their flush on the river and I end up getting stacked in a 14k pot going all in with the nuts on the turn. This one really, really hurts. Earlier this year, I had some of the best months of my entire poker career, winning 20, 30, 50 thousand dollars in one single month of playing poker. But unfortunately, the last couple months in poker have been pretty bad. This month has not been going any better than the month before, and losing this pot is not going to help. This game is good. I'm not going to quit, so I reach deep down in my bag and buy in for another $5,000 before another big hand comes up. There's a couple calls. I've got King Jack suited in the big blind and bump it here to 125. I end up getting two calls, so we're going three ways to king six seven with two spades. I bet two fifty with my top pair and only get one caller. Heads up to another king on the turn, giving me trips. Given the fact that my opponent did not raise preflop, he just called my bet. I don't think he's going to have ace king or king queen very often, so I feel very comfortable betting my trips with a jack kicker. I make it six hundred dollars to go before I get very quickly raised to one thousand. $500. This is pretty scary. I'm showing a lot of strength betting the flop and then continuing again on the turn and I'm getting raised to 1500 I just got stacked in one of the biggest hands I've lost in a very long time and now I'm in another tricky spot. He's representing hands like ace king, pocket sixes, pocket sevens. There is a flush draw and straight draw out there. Maybe he could be semi bluffing with those hands. Maybe he's raising with king 10 or king 9. He could possibly have a 7 and try to be slowing down the action by raising. I think my only option in this case is just to call $1,500 and then reevaluate on the river. Folding would be too tight, and I think re-raising again would be an overplay, so that is what I do. Close to $4,000 in the middle. I'm praying for a jack, a king, or something to help me, and I do not get any help. The river card's an eight. I check over to my opponent who bets out $2,000. This sucks. He's no longer betting a seven for the sizing. He's no longer betting king 10 or king nine for the sizing. So I use my kill button and fold and he shows pocket sixes for a flop set. Turn full house. Man, the poker gods are just not 
on our side tonight. Man, it just feels like I'm getting set up here by the deck. It feels like I'm destined to lose this session, but I'm not going to quit. I raised 7-5 suited on the button to $125. I'm trying to play a big pot here in position, and I get three callers. So four ways to 9-7-7, flopping trips in a multi-way pot. This is a great flop for us. However, the monsters under the bed voice is telling me, great, how much am I going to lose this time? Someone's got pocket nines or a seven. Middle position player now leads into me for $300. I could raise, but I feel like I would call here with a lot of my hands. So I just make the call for $300. And we go heads up to the six of spades on the turn. I now improve to a straight flush draw along with my trips. And unfortunately, my opponent who led out on the flop now checks over to me on the turn. I bet out $500 and he makes a very quick call. I feel like he's going to have a 9x hand here a ton of the time. So when the river card is the deuce of clubs, this is a great run out to hopefully get max value from a top pair holding. I don't want to bet too big and scare him off. I want to bet a sizing that he'll feel like he has to call with his top pair. So I make it $1,100 to go. He doesn't snap call right away and he doesn't snap fold right away, which means he does have a decision. I'm thinking to myself at this time, if he raises me here on the river, I'm going to be so pissed. I may just quit poker entirely and go back to driving Uber. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. I'd probably just rebuy and continue to play. After about a minute of thinking, he's giving off the signs that he's considering a call or a fold. And given the fact that he's not going to raise, I feel like we always have the best hand. He now starts talking out loud and says, well... I don't beat aces, kings, and queens. You did raise preflop. Maybe you could have those hands. That's not really what we're hoping to hear from him. After thinking another 90 seconds, my opponent eventually folds pocket tens and overpair to the board. Wow, what a great fold by him, but sucks for us. We should be getting paid off there a lot of the time, and somehow he found the fold with the overpair kind of tilting because we lost a max straight versus flush draws and now we're winning the min when we're ahead i'm still stuck a lot on this session probably around five or six thousand dollars this is just not too fun i'm now in the game for eleven thousand dollars i've got around fifty five hundred dollars in my stack it's somewhat shorthanded now when the button opens up to 75 big blind three bets to 250 i get a little out of line with a cold four bet to six hundred dollars with king nine of diamonds hoping to take this one down pre-flop but that doesn't happen when the button folds but the big blind makes the call so we're going heads up here in position in a four bet pot with king nine to king jack nine with a flush draw we flop two pair but it's a very wet and connected board i announce a bet of four hundred dollars and before i can even get the chips out of my hands my opponent raises me and announces a raise to one thousand two hundred bucks man i am just getting put into the blender in this session now obviously we have a great hand two pair but this is a four bet pot he could have a lot of better hands than us king jack pocket kings pocket jacks pocket nines queen ten for a straight I can't fold. My hand is just too strong, but I actually don't really like this. The monsters under the bed are telling me he's got me beat. The turn card is a seven of spades. I feel like if he raised with a single pair of king, or maybe even with a flush draw, he would slow down on this turn card, but he does not slow down at all. He fires out three pumpkin chips for a $3,000 bet. I look down at my stack. I've got around $3,700 left. Basically, he is committing us all in, and I'm actually in a tough spot. This may seem like somewhat of a nit roll that I'm actually thinking about this situation and not just going all in right away with my two pair, but like I said, he's showing so much strength on a board that I should be connecting very well with, given the fact that I four bet preflop. Like I said before, he can have straights, bigger two pairs, sets on this board. I just feel like I'm losing to a lot of hands here. I don't like this situation. If I lose this pot and go all in, I'll be down $11,000 on the day with only around one hour left to play. If I fold here, I can save myself $3,700, but I don't think I can ever fold two pair in a four bet pot. I really go over my options. I feel like this is what happens when you get beat up day after day after day. 
When you have a big hand, you always feel like you're beat. But eventually, after about a minute of thinking, I just think my hand is too strong to fold. He could maybe have some straight draws and flush draws that he's semi bluffing with. Maybe he's got ace king or aces. So I pray to the poker gods, close my eyes, and go all in. My opponent who covers me gets a count from the dealer, realizes it's only $700 more, and then puts in the call over a 10k pot here with two pair. I have no idea if I'm ahead or behind. I show my cards and he shows ace king. We gotta fade a jack or an ace and we do. We double up in a huge pot. My heart was racing there. I was praying I wasn't up against a better two pair or a set and to see ace king is a great scenario and to hold on two runouts is amazing. I've been playing for around six hours in the game for $11,000 getting coolered, bad beat, stacked, and now we end up winning a massive $10,000 pot, which has got us almost back to even. We only have $1,000 to go. Man, this was a sick one. I've got one more big hand for you guys, and it starts when I look down at Queens. There's a raise to 75, a call. I bump it to $400, but an initial raiser folds, but the same player with Ace King, who we doubled up earlier on against, makes the call. It seems like maybe he is going after us, trying to get some of his money back. We see a 10 high flop with Pocket Queens. Pretty good all in all. My opponent checks, and I bet out big here, $500, and again... I get raised. He makes it $1,500 to go. I am not kidding when I say this session is insane. I'm just in so many odd spots. Now again, I have around $9,000 in my stack now, and my opponent's got around $8,000 in his stack. We don't really want to be putting in $9,000 with queens on a board like this, but I can't fold, so I make the call. The turn card's an ace, not a great card, it's an over card to my pair, but my opponent now slows down and checks over to me. I think I could bet small here to try to get a cheap showdown or check behind, and I like to check behind and the river card is the six of diamonds. I'm praying my opponent checks and maybe I can put out a small value bet against a 10x hand, but checking is not what he does. He fires out a $3,000 bet and now we are in another tough spot here with Pocket Queens. This is a three bet pot. I bet $500 on the flop. My opponent check raised me to 15. The turn card's the ace. He checks and I check. The river card's a six and he leads out for $3,000. I just have no idea what to do in this situation. I don't have the queen of spades, which is good, meaning that he could have some busted flush draws like queen jack or queen nine of spades. He could have hit two pair with a five, six of spades hand. Eight, nine makes a straight. He could possibly have the ace, x of spades flush draw. All those hands beat me. Two pairs, sets, straights, and ace beat me. However, once he checks to turn, it does make me feel like I want to call here. I just have no idea what to do. I want you guys to pause the video. Go down in the comments below. Let me know what you would do here with pocket queens. I go back and forth in my head whether I want to call or fold, and eventually I let this one go. I fold my pocket queens. I have no idea if it's good or bad. However, another player at the table wants to see. He uses his kill button, and the opponent shows queen jack offsuit for a total stone cold bluff on the river. Wow, what a sick hand. That one was wild. Shortly after this, the table ends up breaking, so we got a call tonight. Pretty tilting last hand there. If I would have found the call, I would have been up around $3,000 on the session, but I folded my pocket queens, which I feel like is a fine fold. Either way, we end up calling it tonight, racking up our chips, and heading out. Ooh. What a session. My God, I ended up losing $3,400 on the day. Um, that 
clean jackhand was just insane. I do believe that that may have been one of the worst beats I've ever taken. A $14,000 pot getting it all in with the stone cold nuts, three ways, and losing to two flushes. Just a nasty, ugly beat getting completely stacked. I mean, that was pretty rough. I had to rebuy. Honestly, poker has been going pretty bad for me these last three months. In November, I won $0, worked the entire month, made zero dollars december i lost 17k and then so far this month of january i'm down thirteen thousand dollars so that's like a thirty thousand dollar downswing along with the money that i'm spending on rent you know all the bills i have food and all that kind of stuff so to be honest it's probably the worst poker downswing and life downswing i've ever been on but i'm trying to stay positive i'm trying to remember you know how I got here in the first place, which was grinding through downswings and trying to get my money back. And I know that I am a consistent winner in these games because I've been winning for the past five years, but sometimes it just beats you down mentally. Sometimes it just makes you wanna, you know, change professions when you just come in and you lose every single day, which is what's been happening to me the last uh, two months. Basically just, you know, every single time you have a good hand, someone has a better hand, you get bluffed, you make a bad call, you get cooler, you get bad beat. That kind of happened tonight. It was just a roller coaster session, but mostly like a roller coastering down session. I had one big hand, King Nine of Diamonds doubled up against Ace King, but I got coolered trips versus a full house. Um, I didn't get paid off with my flush. I didn't get paid off when I made trips versus an overpair. And then I folded pocket queens versus a $3,000 river bluff. So uh, yeah, it was pretty tough. However, I do feel like I played well. I didn't feel like I made any huge, crazy bad mistakes or huge punts or anything like that. You're gonna lose in poker and I understand that, but it sure does hurt when you just keep losing. It'd be nice to like, lose a couple days, win a couple days, lose a couple days, win a couple days. But when you just lose for almost three months straight, it's pretty rough. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. I'm gonna get some sleep and then edit this video. Until next time, I'll see ya.